Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. <music> Kathy Lewis, Elliot Lewis, two of the most distinguished names in radio, appearing each week in their own theater, starring in a repertory of transcribed stories of their own and your choosing. Radio's foremost players in Radio's foremost play. Ladies and gentlemen, Elliot Lewis. Good evening. May I present my wife, Kathy. Good evening. Fascination is defined as being a spell. And yet, if you were to cast a spell over someone, it could be defined, but it would be very difficult to explain how you did it. A word can be defined, but it's next to impossible to explain motives. The author's job is to make it clear to an audience why people behave as they do. A common example, the mystery play, where you're asked to accept the villain's reasons for committing a murder. Simple example, the author's relatively easy problem in dramatizing a mother's love for her child. A medium example, as stated here some months ago, the reasons why a man must climb a mountain. Tonight's problem, why a woman loves a man. Which brings us back to the word fascination. It's the title of tonight's play. It was written by Richard Chandley. And in it, he will dramatically discuss a good woman and a bad man and what happened to them. Since Dick has chosen to set his story in the Old West, we begin with Fred Steiner, who has written an overture especially to set a mood of time and place. Come on, Charlie, be reasonable. I'm reasonable. Eighty-five dollars is cheap for that horse. I can buy just the same animal for sixty anywhere in town. Then you go do it, Mr. Hack. Now, look, Charlie, you know and excuse I know... Excuse me, would you let me pass, please? Uh, oh, excuse us, ma'am. We... Hey, if it ain't Miss Ann Grace. Look who we got here, Charlie. Why, howdy, Miss Grace. Looks like you all packed up to go somewhere. Didn't you know, Charlie? Miss Grace is leaving town by order of the court. Don't you read the paper? Yes, I plumb missed it. All over the front page, wasn't it, Miss Grace? Will you please get out of my way. Tell the court about the man who robbed the mercantile company where they caught her that night. Or get out of town. Judge was mighty lenient, wasn't he, ma'am? I hear some say too lenient. Get out of my way. Stage will be along right soon now. Don't forget you gotta say goodbye to the sheriff. Sheriff Meade. Good morning, Miss Grace. Court's instructions were that I report to you on this date, and you are to see that I am put out of town. Yes, ma'am. No. Stage ain't due for a few minutes. Won't you sit down? I'll stand, if that's all right. No need to be so formal, ma'am. Sit down. I was hoping we wouldn't have to go through with this business, ma'am. But you'd be in to talk with me before today. I had nothing to say when, when I was caught because there wasn't anything to say, Mr. Meade. There still isn't. Now look, Miss Grace, you're a nice person. Always been respectable... You ain't the kind who deliberately helped someone bust into a place and steal $4,000. I don't want to go over it, Sheriff. But it just don't make sense, ma'am. You've had all the humiliation the town could heap on you in the last couple of weeks. Maybe that's worse punishment for a woman than being locked up. Is it sense to lose your reputation, get run out of town for a skunk who run off and let you face it all by yourself? I've said all I have to say. If you figured he'd come back and try and send you a message, we've been watching for that, too. He hasn't, ma'am, and he won't. You know that by now, don't Please you? stop. I'm taking my punishment. All right, Miss Grace. Stage is in. You ready to go? Yes, I'm ready. I'll take your bag. Thank you. I can carry it. Here, here she comes. Hey, uh, Sheriff, who's the lady you got there? <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Grace. 
I expect you'll be going a long way from here. Yes. Goodbye, Sheriff. Frank, is she on there? Stop the bus now. I'm gonna let him get the door open. I don't see. Oh, there she is. Now, for heaven's sake, be nice to her. Frank, please. Anne! Anne! Here we are! Oh, oh Anne. Oh, Anne. Hello. Darling, it's so good to see oh, you. It's good to see you. Frank, how are you? Hello, Anne. I must look a sight. Oh, you look just fine, doesn't she, Frank? I'll go get your bag. You take her on the buggy, Alma. The buggy's over this way. Oh, I'm grateful to you and Frank for letting me come to you, Alma. Nonsense. What are sisters for? When you wrote about everything, I would have gone to you, but, well, Frank... He I... wouldn't let you. He's right. I'm glad you weren't there. It wasn't pretty, Alma. And... You're with us now, Anne. Everything's going to be fine. I'm all right. Alma, has anyone come to you asking about... or a letter? No. Are you expecting someone? No. Not really. It was a silly question. What is it? Nothing. Just being here. I feel like I never want to go outside again. Anne, what you wrote, this man, and caught robbing a place. Yes, it's true. Oh, Anne. How? I was in love with him. We're going to be married. Makes me even a bigger fool, doesn't it? I don't know. I just don't understand. We met three months ago, Alma, just after he came to town. I'd never known anyone like him before. Everything was just wonderful. We were to be married and then come this way on our honeymoon. One night we were walking. He said he had some business with a man at the mercantile company. It was late. He said the man wanted it that way and had given him a key. It all seemed so reasonable. I, I didn't know what he was going to do until after we got in. He said he was doing it for us, that, that marriage was no good without money, lots of it. And then there was noise out front, and they came in after us. He left me. Anna. I wish there was something I could say. I got plenty to say. Frank, how long have you been... I heard... You always been too blamed independent for your own good, Anne. Living off in that town by yourself. Could have come to us a long time ago. Oh, please, Frank, can't you see she's all worn out? I told you I was going to tell her, and I'm going to get it said. Nobody in Sagamon can say nothing again, Alma, on me, Anne. You're under my roof. You've got a chance to start clean act proper. Oh, for goodness sake, Frank. Hasn't she been through enough? Well, I hope she's learned something. You've got to prove it, that's all. All right. It's getting on time for supper. Go fetch some wood for the stove. Mm. Sorry, Anne. He didn't mean it to sound just that way. He always said someone should take a strap to. I need something, Elm. It's all over now. No one knows anything about it here. Got to start to forget it. It's just a... I'm such a fool. After all that's happened, I should hate him. I should. I should never want to see him again, but he's still in my mind. And you still feel love for him? I want to get over it. I know I've got to. And then that's the beginning. And the worst thing you can do is just sit. You've got to get out and work at something, just like you've always done. 
He's so busy you won't have time to think. Will you do it? Yes, I'll try. Fine. You rest up a few days and then we'll go in town. The hotel's busier than all get out. Fred Colby hasn't got half the help he needs. Everything's going to be fine, Anne. I just know it. <laughs> I gotta keep a pretty close eye on the desk. That's all right, Mr. Colby. Everyone's been telling you you need more help, Fred. Yes, ma'am, I don't deny that. Hardly got time to catch my breath. Uh, you said you knew something about keeping books, Miss Grace? Uh, enough to get by, I think. Well, that's just fine. It's usual for a woman to know something like that. Where'd you learn? She's just clever, Fred. I told you. Uh, I guess so. Well, if you know books, won't be much to the desk work. Grace, I can teach you that in no time. It'd be a real favor if you want to work. Thank you, Mr. Colby. You're doing me a favor. You could stay right here, save you the trouble of going in and out to your sister's place if you want. Sounds like the sensible thing. You do it, Anne. All right. When could you start, Miss Grace? Anytime you say. Now, if you like. Good. Seventy-eight dollars. Sixty, sixty-three. Figure out, right? Oh, well, Mr. Colby. Just adding up the cash I've taken in today. Something you want me to do? Just leave off work. It's after six. I, I just have to enter this in the ledger. You know, you've been here a week now. People are beginning to talk about you. It's not good. Talk about me? They say I work you too hard. From now on, you stop on time. Oh. But it, it, it's just that I like the work. I'll enter this total in the ledger. And that's all. No straightening things up. Just the total. Yes, sir. It's a real nice girl. I agree with you. Huh? I said I agree with you. She looks like a very nice girl. Oh, excuse me. Didn't see you come in. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I'd like a room. And a bath. If you've got one. Yes, sir. We got one. You come in on the stage? Just in. Was that east or westbound? Does it matter? Hmm. Glad to have you. Room's ten dollars and bath's two dollars extra a piece. That's in advance. Hundred dollars. Well, I'll have to go back to the office to change it. Excuse me. Just but... credit it. I'll be here for a while. Where do I find my room? 205. Here's your key. It's upstairs on the right. That's at the end of the hall. Thanks. If there's anything you want, I'll let you know. Hundred dollars. Ledger's closed for the night, Mr. Colby. Is there anything else? Nope. Except it's about time we start using first names, don't you think? All right, Fred. Good night. Uh, won't be much to do on Sunday if if you'd like to, maybe we could go for a ride. Ask me on Sunday. Good night. Good night, Ann. Ann. Hey. Hello, Ann. I couldn't come to you any sooner. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? You are listening to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. Tonight's play, Fascination. Yes, in many communities today, by letting schools get out of date, by not keeping our classrooms up with the expanding need, we've let Frankie's and Johnny's down by the thousands. And better schools don't build themselves. So let's all join hands and minds with those in our communities seeking to improve our schools. Get in the civic fight to give our young the education they deserve. Oh. 
How did you find me? How did you know I was here? Let's get out of the hall first. No, Clay, I... You're through downstairs, aren't you? I heard you say goodnight. We've got to talk, Anne. No, Clay, I don't want to talk. Let go. Now, will you listen to me? Did you know I was here? Sagamon? You told me your sister lived here. It's a natural place for you to come. You didn't forget that, did you? Anne, I didn't want to leave you there that night. It was bad luck. I couldn't do anything else. Bad luck? That's what you call it? Just bad luck? I know what happened to you, Anne. You think I feel good about it? You think I left you in that trouble on purpose? Didn't you? All right. You believe that? Why didn't you tell him about me? Because I... Because there wasn't I... any choice, Anne. I love you. I would have given anything to let you know where I was, but that's just what they were looking for. You knew it, didn't you? Yes. I'm the one they wanted. When they couldn't get at me through you, they let you go. That's why we're back together today, instead of five years from now. I, I, I don't know what to believe. Believe what you feel. Believe your eyes. Would I be here now if I didn't love you? I don't know. This moment, I'm not sure what kind of person you are. I took that money for us, ma'am. That was the only reason. I wanted us to start off big, get going good so we wouldn't have to worry. I was wrong. It was the first time and the last time, Anne. I promise you. I've got to think, Clay. Please, Anne. No. Don't kiss me. An awful lot's happened, Clay. You've got to let me think it out. All right. Any rules you say. I don't want to see you for a while. I want you to leave me completely alone. We don't even know each other. Agreed. When will you see me? I, I won't have any time. Uh, until Sunday. Sunday, then. Don't be too sure of it. Good night, Clay. I saw some pretty country just outside town. Hire a rig for the afternoon and ride out east. I'll meet you. Good night, Clay. Sunday. I'll meet you Sunday. What? Oh. Yes, Fred. Thought you might be in the office. Got your nose in those books again? <sighs> no. I, I just wanted to be alone for a little while. Oh, I didn't mean to butt in. Don't be silly. What is it? Well, it ain't any of my business, but you seem like you got a good deal on your mind the last couple of days. Brow all wrinkled up, gazing off into space. Is it trouble? No. No, nothing like that. If there's any way I can help. Thank you, Fred. It's just something I have to get straight for myself. Well, anyways, it's Sunday. You ready to go? What? For a ride. You told me to ask you again on Sunday. Oh. Oh, Fred, I... Oh, I... I promised Alma I'd go out there this afternoon. Can't I ride you out? I'm, I'm sorry, Fred. I've already rented a buggy... Will you forgive me? Sure. This isn't the only Sunday. And there's a dance coming up this week. Maybe we could go to that, huh? Maybe. I'll know after today. Did I choose a good spot? Yes, it's beautiful. Just the place I thought you'd pick. I've been looking around while I waited. It's good land. You were very sure I'd come, weren't you? No, I wasn't. Why didn't you go on when you left me? Why did you come looking for me? I could have forgotten you. I know I could. I love you, man. If it took ten years, I would have found you. I'll tell you something. 
I want money for us. I've seen what it can do, and I know what it's like without it. I wanted everything to be right. I was just wanting it too fast. That's the other person in me, Anne. He loved you enough to do anything. Oh, Clay. I love you. I can't help it. Promise me that other person's gone. He's gone, Anne. I promise you. It's getting late. I have to be starting back. You know, this place reminds me of when I was a kid. Is that why you wanted to meet here? Might have been. We had a lot of land like this. What were you like as a boy? Scrawny. We had a drought for two years, no money, so they kicked us off the place. After that, the family just fell apart. I think I was 14. That's what I mean about not having money. I'm sorry, Clay. No reason to be. That's why I like cities. You can build things that won't fall apart. You'll help me, Anne. And we'll do it right. We'll do it right. I want to leave here as soon as we can. I think sometime this week. This week? Sure. We can't get married here. We're not supposed to know each other. I've only been in town four days. Looks sort of funny, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. I'd completely forgotten why we had to pretend. It's not exactly a good way to begin again, is it? We love each other, Anne. That's all we need to begin. Just about the prettiest on the floor, eh? Thank you, sir. <laughs> You're really sparkling tonight. Uh -huh. Only sorry I wasn't the one to bring you. Oh, I'm sorry I had to turn you down, Fred. Well, I'm not losing too much. I'm getting my dance. I've been looking for Elma and Frank. Have you seen them? I saw them earlier. They're in this crowd somewhere. I guess the whole town's in here. I want to look for them. Will you excuse me, Fred? Sure thing. Can I have another dance later? Later, maybe. And Clay, here I am. I thought I'd lost you for good. This dance is mine, isn't it? Um, I don't think I've ever been this happy before, Clay. How many people would you say were in here? Practically the whole town. You're right. I went out for some air and looked around. Tonight's the night. What? It's lucky for us. I feel it. We're leaving tonight. Leaving tonight? I got us a rig this afternoon. We can drive on to the next town and get married. <gasps> Couldn't you have told me? I'm not even packed. I, I, I haven't even told Fred I'd be leaving my job. Anne, do you love me? I love you, Clay. If we go back to the hotel, will you pack? Now? Right now. Come on. Clay, what is it? Nothing. It's just a lucky night. Will you leave it to me? Why all the hurry? Clay, Clay, please. I, I just can't disappear without telling a soul. You'll see. Here. I, I, th I thought we were going to the hotel. After we're through here. Get out of the way. Clay, what are you doing? I'm getting into the express office. That's it. Inside. No! Inside! See how easy... Nobody on the street because they're all at the dance. Sheriff, deputies, everybody. Clay, you can't. It's for us, Anne. That's the only reason. We don't need it, Clay. Please think. There's still time. We, we, we've got to get out of here. You stay right here by the door. If you see anyone coming near, you call me. I won't do it. You'll do it. Just a few minutes. You stay right there. Clay. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to leave you here. I'm not going to do this again. Easy, Anne. Just a couple more minutes. 
Goodbye, Clay. Anne, anyone coming? Anne, don't open that door. Hey, hey, somebody's busted into the express office. I see him. There he goes. Hey, you! to get some fresh air. Fascination, starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage. In a moment, Mr. and Mrs. Lewis will tell you about next week's play. C, 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 CBS. Radio. I, I, I like it best. Radio. I like those CBS radio shows. If you're sitting at home. If you're out in a car. CBS radios where you are. CBS radio. Richard Chandley has written the answers to why a fascination existed. Clayton Post and Junius Matthews were glad to see Kathy leave town. And Herb Butterfield was the sheriff who insisted upon it. Irene Tedrow was my sister, and Jack Crucian, her husband, and I went to work for Barney Phillips at the hotel. And to finish it out, Byron Kane was the stage driver who got you from one place to another. Having gone through the mail of the last year and a half and carefully noting your preferences and dislikes, next week we're going to do a story which seems to us as timely and true as it was when we first presented it to you. Until next week, thank you for listening. And good night. Good night. Music for tonight's story was composed and conducted by Fred Steiner. The Kathy and Elliot theme is by Ray Noble. And the program is transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis. George Walsh speaking. Friday nights enjoy a full hour of Arthur Godfrey on the CBS radio network. <laughs>